our native land, our native land, our native, our native, our native land. Hoya, hoya, our native. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Our Native Land. I'm your host Chad Asleo. Thank you for joining us. Before we get started today, I would just like to do a territory acknowledgement. I acknowledge with respect the Lokwangan peoples on whose traditional territory Czech Studio stands upon and to all the tribes that are part of the new channel, Coast Salish and Kwakwakwak on Vancouver Island. I thank these nations and traditional land keepers for allowing us to live work and play on their lands and again i thank you the listener and viewer for tuning in to another episode today's guest is teone spouthofer is a hereditary member of the health nation from coastal bc since childhood she has loved immersing herself in her own culture and learning about other cultures around the world uh, she has worked as a publicist, a radio journalist, host, and producer, and an arts and music writer. Her documentary, Teoni's Dream, informed by her mother's residential school experience, has aired nationwide on CBC Radio. She has been blessed with three daughters and four grandchildren and calls East Souk her home. Teoni is a Vancouver, uh, Vancouver Island artist, has just debuted her first children's book, Little Wolf, uh, released by Heritage House Publishers in May of 2021. Little Wolf is the first book in a trilogy. The book follows a young Indigenous girl as she moves to the big city and learns to find connections to her culture and the land wherever she goes, despite encountering bullies and feeling of isolation along the way. Teoni is going to tell us a little bit more about her life, her background, and her new book. Teoni, welcome to Our Native Land. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Awesome. Very honored to be here. Oh, thank you so much. I know we've been talking back and forth quite a bit, and I'm glad we finally made it here and uh, get to get to chat about uh, you and your book. So this is the book right here. Thank you so much uh, for sending it to me. I really appreciate it, as the viewers uh, can see here. And I'll describe to the listeners. It's, it's very vibrant, has beautiful colors. And we're just talking about, uh, you know, six or seven times a year in BC here, we get that beautiful, uh, you know, orange, red kind of fiery uh, skyline. And that's one of the things that I really liked about the cover. So thank you for sending it to me. And we'll get right into it a little bit later. But I just want to ask a bit more about your background, your heritage, your culture, and a bit about your upbringing. I always like to know these things. All right. So I'm from the Haltic Nation, as you mentioned. And my family history goes back there to my great great grandparents. I know their names. After that, it's very silent. Because we were an oral culture, a lot of that history has now been uh, lost. But we have been carbon dated to having lived there for 14,000 years. So that gives me great comfort because those ancestors are my family. And I just love that. So uh, that's pretty special for me. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as my career as a journalist goes, I started off in the 80s as a volunteer at Vancouver Public Radio, and then in the 90s moved into a paid position with Mountain FM on Squamish. And from there, progressed to freelancing for CBC Radio in Vancouver, which was a lot of fun, and I learned so much every time I worked with those producers. Uh, eventually, I had a monthly spot with them. Uh, I had the pieces I mentioned internationally on CBC Radio, which was really exciting. I worked with them in working here out of Toronto. Eventually, uh, these dreams came to me, which evolved into the radio piece that ran national, and then also this trilogy that is being published. Mm -hmm. So you kind of touched uh, on the book right away there. So you started having some dreams uh, in the past. Are those dreams are what inspiring this book? Is that correct? It is. The dreams actually I've had have been uh, First Nations dreams and very vivid and clear. And I've brought healing information to me in my life. Uh, the story I did with CBC Radio, for instance, was about a healer named Firewood. And then with book three in this current trilogy, there is another dream that I had. And so this trilogy actually started with that dream in book three, and I worked backwards. <laughs> oh, okay. That's so kind of like a, like a Tarantino thing, but you're starting from the back going forward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've read the book. You've obviously sent it to me, and it kind of, in, in brief, it's following a story of a, a young Indigenous uh, girl who is uh, separated from um, uh, her culture and her land, in a sense, and move to 
um, you know, the mainland, it kind of looks like Vancouver or Stanley Park, to be honest. So uh, I'm going to assume she moved to the mainland and the city and then feels removed and, uh, you know, urbanized and then gets, you know, into these bullying situations. Was that, is there somebody in your life that you've seen that has this experience? Is it something that you've gone through? Are you trying to touch on, on you know, the hearts of, uh, you know, urban uh, urban indigenous people uh, through this book? Can you kind of maybe guide me on, besides the dream, the, the inspiration behind it? Oh, most definitely. So Little Wolf is actually based on three generations of women in my family. So through the magic of the pen and writing, I took the experiences of my mother, myself, and my daughters and blended that into the character of Little Wolf. Um, and yes, the cover is Landscape Bridge. I mostly grew up in Vancouver after being born on Vancouver Island. And so Little Wolf has many challenges when she moves to the city. She feels like she doesn't belong there. She really misses the country and her animals. Uh, so she she does have some challenges, as you mentioned. Also, there is there is an episode of uh, racism at her school when she doesn't say in the book, but it happened to me. I was only eight years old at the time. Mm -hmm. There have been other incidences since then, but I felt that fit really well with the book. Mm -hmm. uh, so she also has a lazy eye and and needs to deal with that. Along the way, she adopts a rescue dog. Mm -hmm. her, mother. her mother makes sure she's connected to her culture in the city and that really helps ground her mm -hmm. they go to beating classes together dance classes and that really uh, opens up her world and she feels more comfortable as well as is learning to see nature in the city along the seawall in parks uh, everywhere she goes yeah yeah, there's a little otter that follows her, uh, follows her along. I don't want to give the book away, but yeah, that, I I found that really entertaining. You know, puts on the red jacket so the otter can see here. It's quite it's it's quite cute, honestly. That actually happened to me. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, that's my experience. Like you had an otter follow you every time you'd go to, yeah. so you'd wear red and it would yeah. follow you. Yeah, the first time I went and this happened, I had on my red rain jacket, and I remembered that I wore that. So the next time I went back, I made sure I wore it again. Yeah. So the otter would say, oh, there, there's that person. I yeah. want to be with this person. And would follow me along the shoreline for quite a ways. Yeah. And so that happened a lot that spring. And, and I always wore that when I had my jacket. So the otter could pick me out of the crowd of people you know, so just walking along. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. And here in Victoria, that's also happened to me. Uh, as an adult, it's happened walking along in the farm. Wow, well, you're like you're like um, you're like Caesar Milan for wild animals. <laughs> I don't know. I actually have had a lot of amazing experiences with dolphins, <laughs> whales, otters, eagles. Yeah, uh, actually, right rocks. in the right in the beginning of the book, it says, um, "You thank somebody." It says, "Thanks, Johnny, for asking. How do you always spot wildlife everywhere you go?" So this is something that's just always happened to you. Since I was a kid. Yeah. And the lazy eye, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I still will go to that area and I'll be looking for, well, I'll be looking for those, those birds of prey. Yeah. And Johnny uh, is someone who, who asked me when he was a kid at the time, how do you always spot wildlife? And so I replied, and uh, I felt he needed to be in the book too. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, yeah, that was a nice little tidbit. Now, this is your first book, book that you released uh, as a children's author. Have you all, always had this on the back of your mind? I know you've had a, quite a career in journalism and radio, so you, you, you have had this career of writing and, and, and building stories for such a long time. But has this, has this always been something that you wanted to do? No, it hasn't, in fact. Uh, I fell in love with radio as a child. My dad had a CD radio, so I would talk on that it pretend I have really important things to say. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so always grew up loving radio and needed to work in radio and thought, you know, I don't think I would ever want to write. It just didn't seem to grab me. But then I started writing about musicians and the arts for a magazine on the Sunshine Coast. And it sort of took off from there. I did a lot more writing after that. Mm -hmm and discovered with that very first article that actually really enjoyed the process. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
The only thing that's different with now bringing out the trilogy is that now I'm sharing my stories where before I was used to helping people bring their own stories out. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to actually, you know, turn it on yourself a bit and, and have that experience of, of you know, building your own story and, and uh, producing it in a way that's maybe slightly different than what you do, but I, I think it's turned out great. Oh, well, thank you. Thank <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> so you, on the book, you, you touch, a, you touch obviously quite, quite uh, extensively, at least for a children's book, you talk quite extensively uh, about uh, racism and being bullied, uh, you know, in the school system. Um, you know, it, it might seem kind of like a weird question, but you know, at what, what age do you think it's important or what things do you think, age do you think is appropriate to talk about you, to your child about racism? You know, like it, it's a big thing. And like, so at one point and how, how do you deal with it? And do you think your book is addressing that in the way that, uh, could be helpful to parents? I think it's never too early. Growing up first nations, I heard the stories of my mom's experiences in residential schools. And with my own daughters, I made sure that they not only knew that history and our First Nations history in BC, but also First Nations history across North America and uh, many oppressed cultures around the world. I kind of made it my mission. And so I feel it's never too early. I, I feel you can relate to racism to age appropriate groups. Uh, quite easily, and I've done that in schools. Mm -hmm. Just last week, I spoke, I did a Zoom call to grade three class from Surrey, mm -hmm. and uh, definitely not too early to start with them. I would, I started with my kids even earlier than that. Mm -hmm. So, if you're there and you're providing the emotional support they need and providing age appropriate information, start whenever you can. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you. That's awesome. Uh, so you launched this book during a pandemic, uh, you know, just <laughs> shortly after, shortly after a lockdown, you know. So I, I want to know a little bit about that process because one, I find during the pandemic, people are doing things that maybe they've thought of and never thought of doing, and then all of a sudden they have this free time, and you know, you get this book out, and then two, you get this book out, and one of the most amazing things I find. Uh, with, uh, you know, when you're releasing something is you want to release it, you want to be in person and do a book launch. I'm not trying to depress you about this because I'm sure that was something you really wanted to do. But tell me, tell me about this. You know, what 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 was it like? Well, first off, this book was supposed to be out last September. But because of COVID and another uh, detail, the book was um, set to launch this May instead. So before COVID, I had dreams of having a book launch in Victoria, yep. Vancouver, and the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. And I have great, you know, like family connections, community connections in those areas. And now because of COVID, I can't do that. So it's taken, it was very disappointing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's taken me a while to get over that and yep. try and figure out what I want to do. I'm sorry to put salt life. in the wound. I just I wanted <laughs> to know. <laughs> of course. Of course. I mean, it, how can you avoid it? Yeah. You know, um, so I'm doing little things that I can. People are asking for signed copies and I can either send them in the mail or we meet up. I went to Monroe Books yesterday, just popped in, was making a purchase with my daughter and she said, hey, I noticed you have autographed copy stickers on certain books. Yeah. This is me. I'd love to sign your books. Yeah. And they said, great. So they took me off to a little room, which was very <laughs> nice. Yeah. And I signed their copies. Yeah. So that, you know, that felt really good. Yeah. You got to create was, those opportunities where you can in this pandemic, right? Yeah. yeah. So that was a lot of fun. And so then they put it on their social media. I put it on mine. And, and actually, I'll be stopping in a few other stores locally mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, not to announce it beforehand because we don't want a lot of people showing up. Yep. Uh, but to just do it and then let people know they can go and pick up yep. the song's copy. Absolutely. So, you know, adjusting. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Now, and, and just to roll back to that too. So did, did you, f did you get a lot of this? I mean, you probably got this done before the shutdown in March of last year. Oh, because way you, before. Yeah, so yes. you had it done. So it was something you yeah. were going to do regardless if you were locked up at home or not. Oh, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's been on. It's been in the works for a while. Yeah. Uh, generally, you know, it's a couple years at least mm -hmm. if things are on track. Once you're with the uh, publisher. Yep. And you go through all the steps, and in my case, we needed an illustrator, and so 
you know, there's many steps in that process. Mm -hmm. And so just to get back to your question about a book launch, I'm hoping a book number two comes out in September, mm -hmm. which is called White Raven. I'm hoping to do a double book launch. Yeah. And in hopes that we can at least have, say, maybe 50 people yeah. at a gallery. Yeah. So that's what I'm aiming for now, is to just do both of them. That's good. Them. you, you got to be ambitious. Maybe by September, you might even be able to have more than 50 people, too. So cross exactly. our fingers, we get to that <laughs> point, and you get to really enjoy that, because I think that's important for an artist. And it's encouraging, too, because you can get feedback all day, but when you don't have that in-person interaction to see how they react, when you're reading the book or whatnot, you know, it's... I think it's it's just that much more special, you know? Oh, exactly. Like, yeah. I've done a Zoom presentation just last week with the class in, in Missouri, which I love. The kids were amazing. They asked such brilliant questions. Yeah. Uh, you know, I really miss the interaction of seeing the kids, mm -hmm. you know, face-to-face -face in the schools and just opening up their worlds. I've, I've made presentations mm -hmm. about residential schools in the past, about creative writing, about journalism. So my next step, of course, will be the trilogy. And mm -hmm. So I really welcome when we can have that interaction and I can be there in the school. That's really nice. And that's my next question, too. I know we touched on the trilogy before. So tell me a little bit more about the actual two books that you have, uh, you know, eventually coming out. What What are the next two books that, and what can we expect? Sure. Well, the trilogy basically is about your following the family. And as I mentioned, there's three generations of, of women in my family. So with book number two, we meet White Raven, who is the mother of Little Wolf. And we learn about the residential school experiences mm -hmm. um, and how that affects the family. Um, but again, you know, I like to give age appropriate information. Mm -hmm. So, but also to have the children be left with a sense of hope. Uh, because in my mom's story, there was lots of hope. So as she overcame a lot and did some healing work that was so uh, good for her soul and good for our family. So that's book number two. Book mm -hmm. number three, we meet Avalon Woman, which is actually Little Wolf. Mm -hmm. And she's now with a family of her own. It, it focuses more on that. We do meet the family in book two, but it's more about her knowledge and how now she shares that. Mm -hmm. So it's following a family, definitely. Yeah. That's nice. And, you know, it's been out since May, you know, where we're, you know, over a year now you've had the book. What's been the general response, you know, online or when somebody's, you know, sent you a message? Like, well, what has been the general response from, uh, you know, Indigenous um, people in your circle, but as well as non-Indigenous people? Have you, well, what's sort of the, the balancing, um, overlining uh, message you're getting about your book? Well, um, my family, my community, uh, the ones that I have interaction with have reached out and are very uh, happy about the book. The cousin I have, who is like a historian, a family historian, also an archaeologist, mm -hmm. just said, you know, 14,000 years strong, keep going. Yeah. That was just such a great feeling to hear that from him. Yeah. Uh, kids are amazing. The kids uh, I'm getting feedback from. I have a little guy who was in Victoria. He's in grade one. Mm -hmm. Just two weeks ago, he took the book to uh, Chantel mm -hmm. <laughs> and loved it so much. Had to tell everyone in his class about it. Yeah. And then also said, you all need to get this book. And I went, oh, my gosh, that just touched me oh, so much. So nice. you know? And there is that little guy out there doing the groundwork. You know? and, <laughs> and Got your own little salesman. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I'm hearing stories of kids reading it and, and just loving it and not wanting to share it so much <laughs> with their siblings. They just want to keep it to themselves. Yeah. And, you know, and they all have favorite parts. Others don't mind sharing it. Mm -hmm. and, um, so there's a whole wide variety of experiences That's... there. And they're enjoying it. And I have adults who bought it to share with their grandchildren or their nieces and nephews. Yep. And they can't see them just yet. Um, because the vaccination's coming and that sort of yeah. thing, everyone needs to be safe. So they've read it and reread it and just love it, and I'm so excited to be able to share it with the little ones. That's awesome. Well, I'm, I'm really happy we got to talk about the book. Before we leave, I want you to take the opportunity to let everybody who's listening or watching they're looking at the book right now i got it right right in front of my face here yeah. or they're curious yeah. about getting the book uh you know supporting you what is the best way uh for people listening and watching to support you the book uh, you know follow you online let's let's get all the details okay well locally 
the only bookstores I know about, and I know there's lots of little ones, but I know Monroe Books right now in the month of June mm-hmm. is donating all proceeds from the sale of indigenous books to the Indian Residential, sorry, Residential School Society, mm-hmm. which is a great organization. My mother of was course. helped a lot by them uh, when she was alive. She was a survivor at the school. Mm-hmm. So that is great work. Uh, right from the beginning, beginning Indigo Chapters is donating proceeds from their sale of my book, they choose certain books, uh, to help children and communities in need, which I just loved. I didn't even know they did that. Wow. So I was honored that they picked my book for that. Uh, Strong Nations, you can order from online. Boland Books has it in Victoria. Pharmasave in James Bay has it. Uh, I have a connection to that store, and then we'll be stopping in next week and signing some books there. Nice. So uh, it's available a lot of places, whatever is convenient for the listener, mm-hmm. just go there. Uh, if your local store doesn't have it or they happen to be out, leave your name, they'll get it in free. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Taoni. It's a fantastic book for everybody listening and watching again. It's Little Wolf. Uh, by Tioni. It's a fantastic book. It's colorful and exciting. It's easy to read. Uh, it's a great children's book. It's great for me because I don't think I've actually opened up a book in so long. So I'm going to be very honest. It's, it was good reading for me as I rebuild my reading skills as I got to dive into more books come school in September. So uh, <laughs> thank you so <laughs> thank you so much for sending this and thank you uh, to the listener and viewer for taking the time to listen to another episode of Our Native Land. Thank you, Tioni, for coming thank on the you. show been an honor to be here with you. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much.